Now, the second important thing that you have to understand when it comes to a strobe light is what is wattage? So wattage is very important when it comes to strobe light. When I say wattage, all I mean is what is the power of the strobe light? For example, the Simpex DT300 light that is in front of me, this is a 125 watts light. And whenever you buy a light, the manufacturer would have written there what the power of the light is. But the reason why I want to include that in this video is because I have seen a lot of people wrongly assume that a higher powered light, like let's say a 400 watts light is better than a light like this. So that's not true at all. The power of the light completely depends on the situation that you're shooting in. Most importantly, the size of the place that you're shooting. So I'm assuming since you're following this course, let's say to set up your budget studio or a home studio, you really won't have too big a space or just a medium sized room. And for these small spaces, anything from 100 to 200 watts is absolutely fine. I have never felt the need to really have more than 125 watts of light. I've been using this for quite some time because I normally do it in small to medium sized room. Of course, if you have a commercial studio and it's really large in space and you're shooting groups of people, you might require a 400 watt light, but those are slightly more expensive. I'm guessing 90% of the people who are following this course will be okay with something between 100 to 200 watts. So that is the second thing. Now, the third important part of a strobe light is that whenever you buy a strobe, make sure that it has a button or a knob which can allow you to change the power that the output or basically the power that the strobe is generating. For example, if I just show you the back of this DT300, what you'll find is that there is a circular knob here and I can rotate this. Now what this does is that it allows me to decrease the power of the flash unit when it triggers. So I don't always have to fire this strobe at the maximum output that is 125 watts because a lot of times when you're shooting you would like to have less light on your subject and if you have a light which does not have this variable functionality for example I'll show you another light here this is again by Simpex this is the 300D and this was my first light now the problem was this was slightly cheaper but the reason it was cheaper was because if you look at the back of this there's actually no function of changing or varying the output of this flash. So I always have to fire this light at 125 watts. Everything else is the same except for that little knob that is there behind. Now, when you're shooting in small spaces, this functionality or even in large spaces, any space, this functionality is very important because if you don't have the function of changing the output of the flash, anytime, let's say you need lesser amount of light falling on your subject, you will have to do a lot of other things. Like for example, you might have to lose uh, move the light behind or you'll have to use some accessories in order to cut down the light and that can become very very inconvenient especially in small spaces because you won't have too much room to move around your light so these might be slightly cheaper but I would still advise you 100% to go in for a light which has this knob or a button to change the power the output that the strobe is generating and most of the good strobes out there have this functionality so definitely look out for that so let's just quickly summarize what we learned a flash, a strobe is basically like a flash. The flash unit is this spherical thing that you see here. And this is triggered by using a trigger which comes on top of your camera. So that's when you take the shot, it's just gonna fire onto your subject. The second thing we learned about was wattage. So 100 to 200 watts should be fine. And the third important thing is when you buy a strobe, make sure that you it has a function, a button or a knob to change the power, the output power so you can decrease or increase the output of this flash without moving the light. The light can be exactly where it is. You just turn the knob and you get less light because sometimes you don't want the full light falling on your subject as we'll be seeing later on. A lot of times it's good to have less light falling on your subject. So these three things are what are important when it comes to a strobe light. Of course, if you are facing any confusion right now, I know strobes are slightly complex. When I was starting out, I had no idea of what a strobe was. I just thought, okay, let's switch this on and let's get started. So uh, that's not really true. But if you have any sort of confusion that is left in your mind, don't worry about it at all because the real learning will happen when we actually take the shot with this strobe light. So I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next video where we'll be learning about modifiers. I'll see you there. Bye for now.
Now, before I end this video, I just wanted to show you another light, which is the Ellen Chrome FRX 200. I told you before about it. This is a 200 watts light. Now, I don't own this light, but I've used it a couple of times by renting it from a photography shop. So you, that's another option you have for the expensive stuff that you might need in studio photography or photography in general, that you can always rent these things if you have a renting shop near you, and most probably you will have that somewhere. So the purpose of showing this part is that irrespective of the brand that you have, the anatomy of the strobe light will roughly remain the same. For example, here we are looking at the back of this Ellen Chrome light and you can see it's pretty much similar to what we saw with the R strobe. For example, in, our, in the Simpex strobe, we had a knob to change the part. Here you have a much more sophisticated display digital panel here, which does the same thing. So to power up the light, you can just press this button to power down this one and this is in terms of stops of light the numbers that you're seeing but you don't have to worry about that in higher number means higher power lower number means lower power that's all you have to know for now and here you have the button for the modeling lamp here you have the power supply button these two buttons you really don't have to worry about right now they're not that important this button is really important this is something we'll be discussing later we did not discuss this in this video this is the slave function now, a slave function is very, very important, but right now there is no point in explaining you. That's why I did not include it in the video. Later on, when we will be actually using slave function of a strobe, I'll be telling you what it is and why it is very essential. Of course, this is also present in almost all strobe lights. Now, again, just to show you the back of the Simpex strobe that we were using, you'll see that pretty much everything remains the same. You have the power supply button, you have the modeling lamp button, and you have the slave button here. Now, this is the front part of an other Ellen Chrome light called the D-Light RX, again very popular and you can see that the anatomy pretty much remains the same like we saw before. So this is the modeling lamp and at the back here you can see the flash. Right, so I hope this cleared things for you and irrespective of the brand you buy, things are roughly going to remain the same. That was the point. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll be talking about modifiers. See you there.